Today we're going to go over my May perfume tray and out of the 17 that I put out, only 10 remain. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you my favorites and then also the seven I'm decluttering plus two bonus declutters. So that's all coming up next. So pretty. So this is my number one. Hi dolls, Laura Sparkles here. Welcome to my channel. We do a lot of things around perfume here and decluttering also. And actually, if you don't know my story, I had almost 200 bottles. The 200 bottle collection, I'm going down to 50 and I'm taking you along for the ride. <laughs> so that's what we're doing here. And today's no different. If you like that kind of content, please do hit subscribe for my lovely subscribers returning. Thank you so much for being here with me. I enjoy all your comments and it's just so lovely to have you on the journey with me. So. I just want to jump right into it. So for the May tray this month, there were 17 bottles on the tray. That thing was stuffed tightly like Tetris. <laughs> Many bottles. There are five that were kind of middle of the road that I won't really speak to. I think I need some more time with them still. And then I have five favorites and I'm also going to declutter nine. So my favorites that I wore often and I loved, I was not surprised the first one, you guys. Oh, if you have this, you might know. The pleasure I get out of this one. <laughs> this is Dama Bianca by Zerzhov, and it's this lovely citrusy vanilla floral, and but it's not too heavy on the citrus. It's just pure heaven. Pure heaven. It's like one of these fragrances that like touches me, and I feel like a princess when I wear it, and <laughs> it's just so absolutely gorgeous. You know, and I I've had what's the Creed vanilla. Vani, Sublime Vani, Sublime Vani <laughs> by Creed. I've had that in the collection, I've since decluttered it, but that to me was like much more heavy on the citrus and kind of heavy on the vanilla too. This one is like this ethereal, light, fluffy, gorgeous vanilla and, and this lovely, I think there's violet and some other floral notes plus just a little bit of citrus and it's like the most gorgeous thing. I really enjoyed wearing this. I got compliments on it and from multiple people, like the date I had, also the waitress, <laughs> you know, it's like one of these things where everywhere you go, people are just dropping at your feet because you smell so lovely. And I'm wondering too, I do feel like I need to spray it pretty heavy to get any kind of sillage from it. And I'm wondering if Zerjoff uses more natural products. It kind of feels that way to me. And I, I am very sensitive. I love fragrance and I love perfume. And I also can be very sensitive to fragrance, but this one just feels like it doesn't, it would never irritate me or give me a headache. It just feels, maybe it's more natural, I'm guessing. And anyways, this was like a favorite. I knew it would be. <laughs> and I wanted one that was just like, actually I have a couple that are just absolute favorites. So this was no exception. So that was Dama Bianca by Zerja. You might know my birthday just passed. It was May 22nd. So I chose number 22 by Chanel. And this is the EDT. On the tray, I also had the EDP. <laughs> Look at these massive hunkin' Chanel bottles. Um, I mean, what can I say? The EDT just is made my top five of all time. And actually, Dama Bianca might, is close. It's like top 10 probably, but this is just one of these magical scents that it just like transports me <laughs> to a different time and place when I smell it. Fragrance is so special, isn't it? It can do that. It does that. It does do that. So. What I've decided during this month is I'm going to declutter the EDP and the reason for it, the EDT, so is, if you don't know the Chanel, the Lay Exclusive line, I believe the EDTs were discontinued back in 2016, 15, around there. So I was lucky enough to find a few of these EDTs pre-loved and number 22, there's something you guys, like it just is much more creamy. There's a vanilla note that's really soft and blended and so lovely where I find the EDP is a little more screechy and there's probably more aldehydes too. So it's just a different experience wearing them. And if I couldn't have the EDT, I would probably keep this EDP, but this is one I'm going to declutter. So I'll just tell you that now. And this was one that was just a favorite, the EDT. So again, I would probably keep this one, <laughs> but there's no way I need this much of Chanel number 22. So decluttering the EDP. So that's going and keeping the EDT, clearly I would never get rid of that. That is delightful. Another favorite this month turned out to be 
which is funny. So when I put the tray together, I was kind of on the fence with this one, and I thought there was something about it that was drying sour on my skin before, and maybe that was more in the cooler months, and now that we're in spring, this beauty shined. This is Good Girl Gone Bad by Killian, and like I said before, it's like this lovely... Oh, and you guys, if you haven't caught my May perfume tray video, <laughs> I'll link it for you here, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but basically I put out all these perfumes each month so I'll actually wear them and instead of them sitting in the closet and only reaching for like two or three, this kind of gives me some structure and some discipline to go through and wear these. So I thought in that video, if you'll catch it, that I might declutter this because it, it was drying like kind of sour on my skin, but this month it, it really didn't. It felt very appropriate for spring. It's like this gorgeous, there's some white floral, I also caught that there's a more woody note, like maybe a cedar or something at the base that you could, I catch it on the top, I'm actually wearing it on my skin too. But it's just this fresh, lovely, I think I said in that May video, it's like the hottest hot girls, hot, you know, lovely shampoo, like sexy, clean, fresh shampoo vibe. <laughs> like just really clean and fresh. But then there's a little interest with a cedar note and... I really loved it. I enjoyed wearing it, so I'm going to keep this for now anyways. We'll see if it makes my top 50, but that was a great one. And this one, you guys, in a prior video, I did... I think this one was featured in two of my videos. The first one was the Mother's Day video, which would this would make an excellent Mother's Day gift. It also made my top 10 rose note video. So if you like rose fragrances, I'll also link that for you. This is Essence Rare by Ubi Gaunt. I originally was going to declutter this, you guys, but you know what happened? <laughs> I had a friend over and we were kind of playing with my perfumes and she wore this and then we hung out together for the day and I'm like, oh my gosh, what are you wearing? And I realized it was Essence Rare and from that moment forward, I cannot, I don't think I could get rid of this. It's so sexy. It's rose, jasmine, there's little lily of the valley, iris, just a very interesting blend of uh, florals that you don't normally see together. Like it's a very heavy jasmine with a rose and then the iris. It's like something you don't always see and I've been craving this when I'm not wearing it and it's just, it is rare and gorgeous, the bottle. Also, I'm thinking as I'm decluttering these, I, there probably wouldn't be much of demand. It feels like this fragrance is not well known or, or hyped up at all. I've only heard maybe one or two people ever mention it. <laughs> On the reviews, like there's hardly any reviews even on Fragrantica. So this one I'm gonna keep because I'm loving it and also it'd probably be harder to sell, I imagine, and I've fallen in love with it, you guys. So this one's going back into the collection, although I'd counted it out, <laughs> so that changes my numbers for sure. But this is Essence Rare Ubi Gaunt. That was a favorite for May. And also, again, the time of year is like perfect for this fragrance, like a very lovely floral with rose and it was so good. And then my last favorite, and this was kind of a surprise, so this is like the deal of the century, you guys. <laughs> this is the deal of the century. It's Fancy Love by Jessica Simpson. I'm sure you, you may have heard of Fancy, and uh, there's not too much to do with Fancy and Fancy Love. They're definitely a different fragrance. You get a little bit, like a faint resemblance of Fancy, like just a little recognition, like, oh, that could have something to do with Fancy, but this one is so nice, and actually... I'm gonna declutter another one I thought I wouldn't because of this. <laughs> so this is like, I think I found it for $10, super inexpensive. You can find it at some of these discount stores. Very, very inexpensive, obviously celebrity fragrance. And it's like this lovely creamsicle, I kind of get this orangish creamy, there's a champagne note, it's kind of fizzy and fun and just like joyful, but also, you know, sexy and flirty with that creamy note and the, the fruit on it. And it reminded me, they're different fragrances, but it had a similar vibe to me as Cassili by Parfums de Marly. And I've actually decided to sell, I'm going to declutter <laughs> Cassili because of Fancy Love. They're very similar. This is more of a peach, there's no peach note listed, but it gives me peach vibes all day, you know, kind of vanilla, a little tropicalness, and just joyous, happy spring, summer <laughs> scent. That's Cassili. And Fancy Love was kind of similar. I would say, so I sprayed them both on last night and I woke up and this Fancy Love was gone and I still caught some whiffs of Cassili. So projection and longevity is a lot better with Cassili, but for the price, I mean, $10 versus whatever this goes for, $280, <laughs> $300, I don't know. 
I feel like this one is the winner. So you guys, Fancy Love by Jessica Simpson. Try it out if you like this fresh, fun, yummy, youthful, just yummy, fun. And you kind of want this scent profile. To me, it doesn't need to be like niche pricing. This is a very like easy to come by scent profile that is usually pretty inexpensive. So I'm going to declutter Casili and I'm hanging on to Fancy Love by Jessica Simpson. I liked it, it was really fun. So those are the ones I'm keeping and a couple I'm decluttering. So a few of these I've already mentioned in the rose video I did this month that I am gonna declutter. Bamboo Rose was one of them by Erin and it's a cologne format, a very fresh rose and these huge bottles, I don't need, I already have the other two in this Erin lineup that are these rose colognes. I don't need this one also, so I'm gonna declutter this. I also am going to get rid of one of the Delinas. I'm not gonna tell you which one. <laughs> I actually just did the Delina review, so if you want to know, I will link it here for you. So one of the Delinas are going also, and and then I'm also getting rid of one of these Ubigant. This is the Kekel Roses, um, and I did mention that also in that rose video, so do check that out, especially if you like the rose note. All right, there are four others that I'm going to declutter. The first is a Frederick Mall, which I'm sad. I do love Frederick Mall, and this is a really well done scent. So this is Unpassat, and I believe it means by the way, in French, and it's a very realistic lilac. It's uh, very fresh, aquatic, has a cucumber note. There's also a wheat note. I didn't pick up on that as much. I definitely got the lilac. It just felt like a very realistic lilac. Do you know, you know, some of these fragrances can be very synthetic or have other things going on, but this is just this pure, fresh, green, aquatic lilac. So if you like lilac. I would think this would be where it's at, you guys. <laughs> this, it's like a lilac bush. I was reading reviews and someone was talking about, you know, the feeling of being on a picnic and eating little cucumber sandwiches and that, you know, those little, you know, like English tea time, the little sandwiches with all the little crusts cut out. <laughs> so that's kind of the vibe, but I would also add that you might be on Maybe in the fields next to lilac bushes, maybe you are near a babbling brook or a little river, so you kind of get this aquatic, you know, like the mist, like definitely a fast moving, not like a river, but <laughs> something where there's some water, you know, mist coming up and you get that aquatic note. Maybe, I hate to say it, maybe your grandmother is there with you <laughs> and you're catching up some of her perfume. Because although this is not a very powdery fragrance at all, it's definitely more green and fresh I think just being such pure lilac in this way kind of gave me those vibes a little bit, like not a very youthful fragrance necessarily. And I have other lilac fragrances that I adore. This one just for me wasn't wasn't my cup of tea, guys. For me it was pretty long lasting. The sillage wasn't extreme, it was pretty close to my skin and yeah, it felt like more of an intimate scent and something that was... I smelled throughout the day on my skin, although not, it was kind of in and out. It wasn't like consistently there or not beast mode at all, but it's definitely enough where you'll smell it if you enjoy this profile of lilac, I would say definitely check it out. It's also not too soapy and not, like I said, not too powdery. So more of this green, floral, clean, realistic lilac. So on Passat is being decluttered, just not for me, you know. <laughs> one of those things. There also felt like there's a little bit of gardenia or other white florals with the lilac. Okay, so another white floral that I am going to be decluttering. This wasn't even originally on the May tray. However, I have a friend, which you guys, you have to be so excited when you have friends that are getting into fragrance. <laughs> so I have a friend who's getting into fragrance and she's ordered some sample sets of di different things and she turns out that she's loving this uh, fragrance and I'm like, oh, I have that. Let me just give it to you. <laughs> because it's never been one of my favorites, and I confirmed that today. I wore it earlier today, and it's not a favorite. So this is Florence by Toka, and to me it's a very white floral gardenia, mostly gardenia. You get some other floral notes as well, you guys. And don't tell my friend, Karma, if you're watching this. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoy it. Fragrance is very subjective, right? So this is my opinion, and my opinion only. To me it felt very synthetic kind of almost like hairspray vibes when I first sprayed it and then it, it dried down to more gardenia but to me not a very realistic gardenia I definitely got like the synthetic vibe throughout the wear and 
it seemed like it started off as a skin scent and it just stayed there also so it wasn't projecting the way I like fragrance to and I just didn't really enjoy the wear of it. Um, if I did want to wear Gardenia, I would probably just wear Gardenia by Chanel, the Les Exclusives. Maybe the Pure Perfume or the, I think I have the EDT of Gardenia. I would not choose Florence by Toka. It just wasn't for me, so I'll be giving this away to my friend, and I'm happy she enjoys it, and so that's another declutter. Wasn't on the tray, but happy to part with it, and of course, happy to make, you know, spread the love. If she's into it, happy to give it to her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then there's two others. This was on the tray, so this is an, a Chanel. Speak of Chanel. Okay, so Chanel number 19. Lovely fragrance. Just a very, very green for me and kind of earthy and not this like typical feminine, light, fruity, sweet, like none of those things <laughs> to me. And although I adore the composition of it, and this gets me in trouble. I need to remember this. Remind me, guys, <laughs> as I'm going through this to clutter, I want to think about how I want to smell to others. I know it's not about what other people think. I mean, fragrance can just be about what you, how you're enjoying the fragrance and, and your experience, but I don't want to smell earthy and green and... Like, to me, this felt like nothing feminine in it, and that's just not who I am. I think I'm a very feminine woman, and I just like my fragrance to match my vibe. I think that's what it's more about, is is a fragrance kind of matching who we are. And I've said this before too, right, we can wear fragrance that has nothing to do with our vibe and it's kind of like wearing this crazy wig for the night and that can be fun. <laughs> However, for my top 50, I do want these to just reflect who I am and it didn't feel like I was getting that with Chanel 19. This is an EDP, so I'll be decluttering this. And I'm still holding on to Chanel 19 Poudre. Different. That's a little different, but all right, and then my last declutter for me is going to be Flora Botanica by Balenciaga. I kind of had a feeling, guys, I will say my first impression was a lot worse than where I ended up with it. I did enjoy some parts of it and some of the wear. It definitely grew on me. A funny story, though. <laughs> so, I mean, I wear a lot of fragrance. Like, every day I wear many, like a few, typically, unless I'm just enjoying, you know, just with friends or out, or, you know, then I might just stick to one or two that day. <laughs> but if I'm just at home any typical day, I'm usually going through a few that day. And so I have a 12 year old son, Ryland, who never says anything about my fragrance. <laughs> the one time when I was wearing this Flora Botanica, he, I sprayed it and instantly he's like, what's that smell? <laughs> like, okay. So <laughs> then I thought I had to have the whole conversation of like, oh, well, what do you think it smells like? And he said lemon. So my son picked up on this lemon smell and lemon's not even listed in the notes. Um, it starts off with mint and then in the middle is like rose and carnation and cannabis and at the bottom vetiver and amber. I don't know, there's something that's definitely very green on the opening and maybe that's what he was picking up on. But you guys, I've never ever, he's never commented on any fragrance, good or bad, ever. And even when I <laughs> go to ask him, opinions I get nothing out of this boy ever. I think he has liked the only fragrance I remember him liking, maybe there's been one or two, but he liked uh, Tom Ford, one of the Tom Fords I have, and anyways, this one he commented that it smelled like lemons, and then we had the conversation about cannabis. You do get more of the floral notes as the wear extends, and it was a lot more lovely than I thought it would be wearing it versus just smelling out of the bottle. However, it's just not for me. So there it is, guys. Those are my five favorites of the month and some more declutters. So I'm doing good here. Let me get you a count. Okay, guys, we are at 140 bottles. I'm making progress. The official count originally was 172, so that's 32 bottles. <laughs> not too bad for a couple months' time. I will start listing these. If you're interested in any of these that I'm decluttering, I have a Mercari store. The link is down in the description. And I also sell them on Instagram if you want to follow me there. I'm at laurasparkles underscore. And aside from fragrance, I'm really into lingerie. And I'm also really, really into body positivity, body confidence, especially for us over 40. It feels like we don't see enough of us in this age group that are curvier, more plus-size women with this movement. So, 
So you'll see stuff like that over on Instagram. So if you don't want to see me in lingerie, don't go there. And anyways, but I'd love to share the love with the subscribers here. There's a lot of good stuff going this month, so be happy to sell it to you if you are interested in buying it. <laughs> All right, guys, coming up in the next couple of videos, I'm going to do my June tray, which will have a lot of fun summer stuff. It's summer almost, you guys. <laughs> so exciting. I love summer. I'm ready for a vacation. It's been a while. So summer tray is coming up, or one of the summer trays. June tray is coming up. So you guys, I have a confession. Another video I'll do is going to be unboxing more perfume. I did it. I've been so good. I have not bought a single bottle of perfume for months. At least three months. Maybe two. <laughs> Don't hold me to it. Probably two. But I did. There was a sale and there's like this discontinued perfume that I wanted. And anyway, so I'll do a big unboxing next week and one that I've never smelled before. A blind buy. Yes, I did a blind buy. So that's coming up and we will see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please do like it on the way out. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't and you'll be notified of all the other videos coming up. I'm doing videos twice a week, usually Wednesdays and Saturdays. This week was a little strange. I mean, if you're watching this as it's coming out, there was some pretty terrible things happening here in the US and it just really affected me and I didn't have it in me to <laughs> stay on the schedule. It just kind of threw everything off this week. But next week, back to our normal programming, Wednesdays and Saturdays. So yeah, guys, thanks for being here with me. So I'd love to hear what you wore in May, some of the favorites that you had, and what's coming up for you in June. Do you guys do a monthly tray too? I kind of love it. I need to do it this much of rotation. Otherwise, how am I going to get through all these <laughs> bottles? That's not possible. So anyways, guys, thanks so much for being here with me, and we'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye. Kisses.